Zoe Zephyr, what, what was the official um, sort of, uh, what did they end up uh, finally doing in terms of like, I know she is sort of like, is in the building. Yeah, they've expelled her essentially from the floor. Um, so she she can still vote and things like that, but they've canceled her. <laughs> they have the silenced hallway. her speech, so she doesn't have the ability to like speak. And this is all because she won't apologize for saying correctly that if by passing these sort of anti-trans affirming care bills, they have blood on their hands. And um, which is um, like amazing. Yeah, uh, it, it really is amazing that they're getting away with this. She is still working in the building. I, I've seen um, I guess she is basically like in the public galley section uh, so that she can, you know, follow votes. She can still vote, but she just can't be she in can't speak. the body. It, it's, her her it's speech nuts. is so threatening to them that they had to silence her, which is just I mean, their hypocrisy knows no bounds, but this and, is, takes the cake. Apparently, on a Wednesday of this week, David Gianforte, uh, who uses he and they pronouns, said he sat down with his father, Governor Greg Gianforte. This is a guy who body slammed a reporter uh, mm -hmm. as a way of uh, showing his bona fides when he was running for office um, to uh, give him a statement to basically say, stop. Stop these. Um, anti-trans uh, bills essentially because um i have uh, uh trans friends and non-binary friends and dad please uh and he's, he claims basically that gm40 is you know realizes he'll be excommunicated from the republican party if he doesn't follow through here is um a just to give you a sense of what, like how bat crap crazy these people are they they want to protect the children, uh, according to them, uh, which is why they are trying to uh, ban trans-affirming care. And here is a Montana rep, Kerry Seekins Crow, who has an odd sense of what constitutes protecting the children or her children. One of the big issues that we have heard today and we've talked about lately is that that without surgery, the risk of suicide goes way up. Well, I am one of those parents who lived with a daughter who was suicidal for three years. Someone once asked me, wouldn't I just do anything to help save her? And I really had to think. And the answer was no. I was not going to give in to her man emotional manipulation because she was incapable of making those decisions and I had to make those decisions for her. I was not going to let her tear apart my family and I was not going to let her tear apart me because I had to be strong for her. I had to have a vision for her life when she had none, was incapable of having none. I was lost. I was scared. I spent hours on the floor in prayer because I didn't know that when I woke up if my daughter was going to be alive or not. But I knew that I had to make those right decisions for her so that she would have a precious, successful adulthood at that time. One of the she called her daughter's mental crisis emotional manipulation and her and the fact that she was either at risk of attempting suicide or had attempted you're manipulating I mean, me uh, it's um it's pretty impressive to say that we've got to protect the kids despite the fact uh that they there's data that shows despite this data i'm going to make the decision that will increase the risk of my child being suicidal mm -hmm. and perhaps committing suicide uh, to maintain my dogmatic religious fundamental belief system. Yeah. It wasn't I clear mean, if she's referring to her child being suicidal because her child was wanted to transition. So I, yeah. I didn't want to misgender the child earlier. I, but I, I just, yeah. It, the right. language well, exactly. Is clear. Right. But the, she said, had that been the situation, we no, don't know yeah. if it was or not. Had it been the situation, 
not interested. If that right, was the exactly. one thing to save my child's life. And like the, she, she can tell like the way she continues, you can tell she thinks that no is not a great place to stop. And so she tries to make it sound better. But the way she says, like, she, I wanted to make sure she had a precious, successful adult life or none at all, I guess. Or no, right. or no adult life, like not mm -hmm. as a trans person that is not precious or successful in her eyes. So I guess dead. And that's why, like, you know, when we talk about this, I always return to this concept of like, this is parental narcissism. This is, I have a vision for your life. It's very narrow. It's going to be what I envision for it. Or I'm okay with losing you if that's the case, because you, it's not about your life. It's not about your agency. This is about you being an extension of me. And like the idea that that is it's so widespread among parents in this country that there's like a whole political movement that's pushed by that impulse is deeply upsetting. I, I, I think there are certainly circumstances where it is narcissism, but I really do think that what is driving this is a religious fundamentalism. That too. And and yeah. maybe there's, you know, maybe the distinction, maybe it's a distinction, a difference without a distinction. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, exactly. And and I think that the, the but the, the, the driver, it, it allows them and also other members of the family. I mean, this is the, the, the difference, right? Because it's not just one narcissistic parent. It is an entire worldview that the definition of a precious and successful adulthood for a daughter is to become a wife and mm -hmm. to uh, have a children and to, you know, know her place in the home. And uh, that is what the definition is to have a husband who is in charge of her. And that's what's going on here. And it is a, it, it, it it is definitely narcissistic, but it's also a religious fundamentalism ideology that makes it that much harder to overcome because you might be able to overcome the narcissism of a single parent. But if you have an entire structure, you know, uh, built around this fundamentalist ideology, it becomes much harder, much harder. Yep. And I think we'll see an example of this, frankly, when we talk about the Crowder situation, but uh, we'll get there in a moment.